Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for Dweebovision. I'm a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I'm going to look at a couple of positions from Dweebovision 244. This was the final position of the game, and in this game I missed two bingos. And a missed bingo is one of the most expensive errors you can make in Scrabble. And other major errors are suboptimal bingos and phonies. But not all missed bingos are expensive. However, most of them are. Now let's look at the first of the two missed bingos in this game. This was the rack that I had. And I played Exode for 39, keeping Sings. And what I missed was a Dingeses or Stains. So, let's run the simulation and see how these moves compare. Okay, that's a thousand iterations. And look at the results. Dingeses was the top move followed by my move, followed by stains, and these moves are ranked in order of winningness. But look at the winning percentages. 3.14 for Dingeses, 3.13 for Exode. The difference is negligible, and even the difference between Exode and stains is tiny. So Exode, in fact, is, is fine. There's very little difference between that and the bingos. And look at the valuation which indicate the valuation column which indicates the lost equity. Dingesis was a better play by six points of equity. Now, six points of equity is an approximation for how much better Dingesis would have been in terms of your score in the game. So Dingesis is a better play, but it's only a, a slightly better play. And to put those six equity points into perspective. My average equity loss for a game is about 60 points. In the recent Commonwealth team tournament, which was over 28 games, I lost on average uh, 55 points of equity a game. Now, if a game has about 11 moves, you can see from that that I'm losing about 5 points of equity on every single move I make. So the loss which I incurred by playing Exode instead of Gingesis is comparable with the average loss I make on every single game I play. So whereas a lost bingo can be a howling blunder which costs you a lot of points, that wasn't the case in this instance. But why? Why is Dingesis only marginally better than Exode when it scores 24 more points? Well, the first thing to look at is rack leave. After Exode, I keep two S's. Well, the first of those S's is worth about eight points, and the second is worth almost nothing. But look at the rest of the rack leave. ING does have some synergy, and SING is a pretty good four-letter set. If you add any vowel to this set of five tiles, you've got a pretty bingo-y set of six tiles. So there's quite good synergy going on in the rack leave after exode which will account for some of the difference so we start off with 24 points of score difference that can be reduced by eight points for the s so we're down to 16 points that we need to account for but bear in mind in gc's ends up as being six points better so we're actually looking to account for only 10 points so some of those 10 points can be accounted for by the the goodness of the sings leave in addition to the fact that it contains an S, but probably not all of it. But look at the board. This board does not have a large number of hotspots. What Dingesis does is introduce a fabulous hotspot in row H. It places a vowel right next to a double letter square in a triple word column. So Dingesis suffers, I think, because of providing that opening. Also, there's the opening from A12 across, again, a place where you can put a high-scoring tile on a double letter square 
and then get that doubled. So I think the combination of the hotspots opened by dingy seas and the goodness of the rack leave of exode over and above the fact that it contains an S accounts for the 10 points of unaccounted for equity difference. So that's that play. The other missed bingo was towards the end of the game. Now, again, this was a bingo I didn't see in game time, but I wondered when I spotted it afterwards whether it really was inferior to the move I made. I played Joe for 18 points, but Jolthead was available for 69. Let me run the simulation. And since there are fewer than 13 unseen tiles, I'm going to run the simulation to the end of the game. Okay, and that brings up the thousand iterations. And as you can see here, Jolt Head wins 0% of games. And Joe, which was the play I made, was the best move. And it wins 7% of games, which is still a small number, but it's not zero. So Joe is definitely a better play. And look at the equity difference. Joe is actually worth 25 more points of equity. So why? Well, look at Joel's head. It's a bingo. You're playing off seven tiles. There are only nine tiles in the bag. So after Joel's head, you will have two tiles on your rack. And before Jolt Head, I am 120 points behind. The scores are 330 to me, 450 to my opponent. So I get 69 for Jolt Head. That takes me to 399. I'm 51 points behind. I've got two tiles on my rack, and it's my opponent to go. And he's got access to this triple word square at H1. So he is going to win regardless of what he does. Jolt Head guarantees the loss. But what does Joe do? Joe gives me 18 points, taking me to 348. So I'm now 102 points behind. But I've got two big scoring lanes on this board. And bear in mind there's one tile in the bag, so my opponent doesn't know what's on my rack. There's the double-double lane open in column in row one. And there's also the triple word lane open in column A, down from the B of bound. So there are two winning prospects. Now, the best thing my opponent can do is what he did do, which was to take out the triple-triple lane and score well through the V of voiced. But look at the remaining tiles. My opponent played vicar, but supposing he didn't spot that or he didn't have it on his rack. He may have thought that his priority was to block the nine-timer and played something like Via for six points through the V of Voiced. Then I could have played Blathers in column A and won. So although my winning prospects are slim after Joe, I do have some winning prospects, and that accounts for the difference in the win column. Now, what about the difference in the equity column, the valuation column? Well, Jolt Head scores 69 points. I then have two tiles. What am I going to score with two tiles? Not very much. Look at the tiles that are left. The C is the only high scoring tile, the rest are one pointers. So I might be lucky to score somewhere between 10 and 20 points. Add that to Jolt Head, and you're looking for a maximum total score from this point onwards of about. 80 or 90 points. However, if I play Joe and then Bingo, I could be looking at 120, 130 points, and that accounts for the equity difference. Look at the rack leave after Joe, A E H L T blank. That is a pretty bingo y set of tiles. I'm not guaranteed to bingo, but I will bingo a lot of the time. And because of that, the valuation column, which is an average over all the possibilities is higher is 25 points higher than after the play of jolt head so two instances in this game where i didn't spot a bingo but in both cases 
it was not a bad miss. It's very easy after the game, do a quick check with your anagram calculators and to spot that you've missed a bingo and to feel that you've made a major error and it's cost you the game. Now, that may well be the case uh, most of the time, but it's not the case all of the time. And I think this game illustrates a couple of instances in which missed bingos did not constitute major errors. In the case of Jolthead, the bingo was inferior to the play I made. And in the case of Dingisis, it was better than my play, but only by a very small amount. So nothing to, nothing to sweat about. So I hope you uh, enjoyed watching that video and got something out of it. My name is David Webb, and this has been an analysis video for Dweebovision.